friends in Christ, welcome to our daily reflection for the 10th of August, and it is the feast of St. Lawrence, one of the seven deacons of the Church of Rome, who was executed on the 10th of August in the year 258, four days after the martyrdom of Pope Sixtus II and his companions. Having been promised by the Pope that he will follow in three days, Lawrence gave the money in his custody to the poor and he was sold the vessels in his charge to have more to give. When the emperor summoned him and requested for the treasure of the church, he presented the poor, the sick people, who were being supported by the church under his care as the church's treasure. In anger, the emperor condemned Lawrence to a slow, cruel death. He was roasted slowly alive. A basilica was built over his tomb 50 years after his death by Emperor Constantine. His name appears in the canon of the Mass. We pray through his intercession that we may have the courage to face the difficulties that comes with obeying God. Our first reading today is from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 10, and compares our investment in faith matters with what farmers do on a regular basis. It says, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. For anyone who is familiar with farming, there sh shouldn't be much difficulty knowing that a farmer who cultivates only a plot of land can reap only what one plot can produce. Our elders even say, the one who sows a hundred mounds and claims to have sown two hundred will at harvest time reap a hundred mounds of yam and a hundred mounds of lice. You can only expect so much from the effort you put in because grace builds on nature. Paul, therefore, encourages individual responsibility in the practice of the faith and not just being one person in the crowd. Each one must do as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Often this quote is used for fundraising, but it has a wider application. Paul believes that we all have the good conscience in the first place to make the right decision about how we want to serve God and that once that decision is taken, we do not fret nor peep into other people or base our decision on theirs. Our giving, therefore, must be according to our capacity and we must do so with joy, not grudgingly. The martyrs are great models in this. They gave their lives freely in defense of their faith. Lawrence is such a great example. The gospel is taken from John chapter 12, verses 24 to 26. And it caps today's reflection with Jesus instructing his disciples, saying, If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there shall my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. We may not all have to suffer martyrdom, like Lawrence, but can we die to the little faults of every day, so that we might be alive with Christ? Following Jesus requires that we give joyfully and not grudgingly. It requires that we live in the hope of eternal life by not setting our minds completely on things that are passing. It requires that we be faithful in little things. Word for today. Open your Bible to John chapter 12, verse 26. It says, If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Let us pray. Lord, 
give us a generous heart that we might give without stint in the hope of eternal life. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.